Okay, this is, this is um, a little bit overdue for a video on the Explore Tree Mines project YouTube channel. I've been busy with many other things with the website, um, took a break as well, and did some things setting up for the other YouTube channel, EM Network. I'll put a link below for that one, for those who haven't subscribed to that one yet, if you want to subscribe. There is an audio feed on there. There's that, that is a live feed going from the computer just behind me. It's music. There will be shout outs in the future. It's slow going with develop developments here and there. Just due to ins and outs of life uh, things. I know that COVID hasn't really helped in situations here and there to get things done either. Um, plastics. When people think of the serious issue with plastics in the world, have the pollution issue, they tend to think of this image. Plastic bags. These are, um, you see Morrison's, Tesco, written on there, and it's written back, backwards. Uh, the UK shopping centres, the, the you know, uh, supermarkets, I mean, and you know it's not just the UK it's many other countries they've given you plastic bags one of the things the UK tried to do and is still doing and it is not a solution it's pathetic is charging people for a bag rather than actually selling fabric bags which I would be willing to buy right If we eliminated plastic bags altogether, does that solve the world pol pollution problem with plastics? No, it doesn't even put a slight dent in it. It doesn't, it's nowhere near. Did you buy something today that was perhaps like this? What do you think the outer casing is? Or perhaps, Perhaps you had one of these today. You think most of the outer casing is. And yeah, you'll get some metals here and there with a premium laptop. There's to me lots of plastics there. It's everywhere on my immediate desk surrounding. There's plastic bits surrounding the metal casing here and there with the microphone, um, the USB mold around the USB thing, plastic, have a plastic um, drinking flask here and you know that there's a vitamin, multivitamin tub here that I have multivitamins, that's plastic, there's some surface cleaner there, I've just been able to clean up plastic bottles. This is just in my immediate surroundings here. I have a bunch of pens here that are plastic casing around the pens, highlighters, and so on. It is absolutely everywhere. Uh, it is, we are absolutely infested and super saturated with plastics everywhere. The frame, border around the screen right in front of me plastic this webcam out of casing plastic it's a really really serious problem so this is part one of a number of videos i want to do to address this issue we've written up a article at exploratory minds on the some of the problems here with that so what's the answer you know you wouldn't have a solution just getting rid of plastic bags but it would be a start stop making plastic bags just stop you know it would be a start uh, would it not you know it would be a step in the right direction I don't think the plastic firms would lose out on a big chunk of money if they stop pl selling plastic bags I really don't um, but then I guess I wonder how much it, it is for maybe they would you know because 
they end up on a landfill and they go and produce another and another and another. It's horrifying, really. But let me get to an article. I'll go over it a little bit that we've written. And there will be far more parts for the article to come as it grows. And of course, this will initiate more um, videos from me at the Explore Team Warriors Project YouTube channel. So I'm just going to load up the website now in front of me. And if you go to post, replacements for plastic, this article starts with uh, addressing the world is infested with toxic results of our love affair with plastic could nature itself offer some alternatives from transport to manufacturing food services plastic is everywhere fortunately scientists engineers and designers are shifting their focus to ecologically friendly alternatives that create circular low waste ecosystems. These would include liquid wood, al algae insulation and polymer substitutes made from fermented plant starch such as corn or potatoes. These alternatives cannot, sorry, these alternatives can do lot more than just stem the flood of plastics around the world. They effectively address issues such as safely housing a, a growing population, offsetting carbon emissions and returning nutrients to the earth. True recycling, something that came out of the ground and goes back into the ground with no detriment whatsoever. Transforming one of the most abundant resources into something with utility and sustainability would be something, you know, a, a, it's, it requires a special kind of reworking of nature's materials. So, if I just uh, find another image first, we'll get to that in a bit actually. Stonewall is a naturally occurring rock. Much of it forms after lava cools. It's a process uh, that also forms a steel making product or steel making byproduct called slag. These substances can be melted together, bounded together and spun into fibers to block. Uh, these fibers can be used like fiberglass insulation. And yeah, unlike the fiberglass insulation materials out there, or foam plastic, which is often used to block heat, loss through attics stone wall can be engineered to boast unique properties including fire resilience acoustic and thermal capabilities water repellency and durability in extreme weather conditions over the past few years stone wall has gained traction with eco-conscious architects and designers as they search for more sustainable building materials including uh sorry i lost my place um materials that are cost effective and aesthetic a company named rockwall group is leading manufacturer of stonewall insulation running a production facility in Europe, North America and Asia. They have installed Stonewall in commercial and industrial buildings across the globe, including London's O2 Arena and the Hong Kong 
airport. So another group called Myo MycoWorks is a team of creative engineers, designers and scientists working to extract the vegetative tissues of mushrooms and solidify them into structures curate, curating fungi as one of the as one might other organic materials like rubber or cork another company new york based evocative design uses mycelium as a bonding agent to hold together wood paneling as well as a for fire a flame retardant packaging of mycelium you get from mushrooms mushrooms consist of a network of filaments called hype i think that's how you pronounce it correct me if i'm wrong when growth conditions are suitable fruiting bodies which are the structures specialized for the productions of spores make a sudden appearance so-called mycelia products are thus easy to culture and germinate mycelia can be grown in almost any kind of agricultural waste think of sawdust pistachio shells um, mushrooms grow together within a material which can be configured into any shape forming natural polymers that adhere to strong like a strong glue by making the fungi at a precise temperature they are sorry by baking the fungi at a precise temperature they're rendered inert thereby ensuring that the mushroom doesn't suddenly sprout again like in a rainstorm or whichever it doesn't suddenly start to grow and go all mushy or do its thing like So there's mushroom types, types called chanturas, shiitake, and portobello. These might go better with pizza than mushroomy plaster. One thing is clear though, the future is fungus, fungi, uh, being treated in specialized ways and combined with other materials to make unique, but still environmentally friendly materials right so biodegradable is important now this might sound a little bit disgusting but with <laughs> moving on yeah <coughs> excuse me uh, urine bricks bricks made of urine yeah uh, yeah all of this is a step in the right direction anyway cement concrete pr primarily is made with cement as an, an ingredient uh, and accounts for about five percent of the world's carbon dioxide emissions researchers and engineers are working to develop less energy intensive alternatives including bricks made with leftover Bury grains, concrete modelled after ancient Roman breakwaters and less pleasant sounding, but still a step forward is bricks made of urine. As part of uh, a thesis project, um, Edinburgh College of Art student Peter Trimble was working on an exhibit that was supposed to feature a model sorry a module on sustainability almost by accident he knew he created biostone this is a mixture of sand is very abundant sand 
and get sand all over the world. Nutrients and urea, a chemical found in human urine. By pumping bacterial solution into the sand filled mold, Trimble devised hundreds of experiments over the course of a year until he tweaked the recipe. The microbes eventually metabolized the mixture of sand, urea and calcium chloride, creating a glue that strongly bound the sand molecules together. Then you end up with this brick, your urine brick. Uh, Trimble's design offers an alternative to the energy intensive methods with a low energy biological process of microbial manufacturing. The big bonus is that Biostone produces no greenhouse gases and uses a widely available raw material. While Trimble's material would temporarily, uh, sorry, material would require reinforcement to be as strong as concrete, it could become a low cost way of building temporary uh, structures or street furniture, like your average street bench to, to sit on or something like that. Okay, I know this is very alternative, very different, and certainly that's what's needed. We can't keep doing the same thing and expecting there to be a solution along the way from from charging people for plastic bags because people still buy these plastic bags and the bags are not a solution. As I've pointed out, my desk is infested with plastic objects and so is yours. So is anyone's household. The keyboard, keys, plastic, right? As well, you know, it is everywhere. You just can't get away from it. Uh, here we go. These bio bricks do have an environmental downside. Uh, the same bacterial metabolism that solidifies them could so work also turns the urea into ammonia which can pollute groundwater if it escapes into the environment i'll leave that as part one then we do part two there's a bit more to this and then i'm going to talk about 3d printing as part three 3d printing biodegradable materials this is where we need to go i think with this as a society as a human race um again the other image i was looking for is just mushrooms and fungus just to bring home a point but i lost it here so i'm going to bring it up in the next video they don't really know how many types of fungus there are. Uh, they think there could be millions. They know there's 120,000 that they've categorized. And they, they think that's a very conservative aspect. You know, with the, even, even some species might have some variants as well. So. Yeah, and it's easy to grow different types of fungus, right? Uh, the other image there. there we go. All right, just thank you for watching anyway. And you know, this is to point out this is the type of article we're working on at the moment for Exploratory Minds main blog. If you want to sign up to a social networking on Exploratory Minds, please do. It's a $20 one-off, one-time fee to join. Uh, if you didn't want to do that, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And I'll look forward to doing the next video soon. Cheers, everyone. Bye.